Hello, my name is Margaret Adele, and welcome to a mini story time and recommendation. Now, this is possibly the strangest way I've ever discovered a book. Most of my usual ways of looking for books is, A, I'm usually, like, purposely looking for them, either in the BookBub Daily Deal emails, or on Twitter, or maybe I'm in a library or a used bookstore, and that's most of where I get most of my books. Maybe occasionally, like... I'll be talking to someone else randomly and they'll give me a recommendation I didn't ask for and I'll take it. And I've gotten some great books from there too. But uh, this is the first one that uh, my own anxiety-driven Googling suddenly led me to a new author that I am totally looking forward to reading all of her work. So I am in the middle of a NaNoWriMo story as I film this. It is going to be a super queer sci-fi. There is uh, a triad and a queen and her princess consort. I believe I just made one more ace character and we have a trans character that's more of a side character than anything because I am not in the place to be giving the point of view of a trans character in depth, but I'm super excited for how this is. Now, my main character, whose name is kind of Verity, and I'll explain that in a second, uh, has had that name since the beginning. I like the name Verity. It's very, like, like sci-fi-y, but also easy to, like, pronounce. The thing is, is that she was given that name because at the beginning of the story, she is part of this cult, because I just, I like cult, apparently. Well, I don't like, you know what I mean. Anyway, but then I realized after I had this name that the reason she has the name Verity is because the people in this cult all have multiple syllable names. Three syllables or more. Verity, Bellamy, Atticus, Violetta, Issachar. Like they all have multi-syllable names. And the culture at large, other characters like Benwin or Edric or Christine, all have two or fewer syllable names. It's kind of a subtle differentiation between them. And so I realized that because this character was born in the normal culture and then abducted into the cult as a child, her given name would not be Verity. And I don't know why I didn't realize this sooner, but I was already like a week into typing this thing and I'm sitting there staring at the page going, she's supposed to be revealing to them what her given name was and I don't have one for her. So <laughs> I'm literally like, I have her last name because I had the last name for her mother's. Um, yes, she has uh, a lesbian and a bisexual mother. Uh, who are sadly deceased at this point, but I did appreciate just adding in that little bit. Um, so I had to figure out what her first name is to go with her last name. And it has to be two syllables or less. So I'm trying out all these different names. And then I realized that I've never used the name Anna in a story before, which is strange because I like that name. And I do have a tendency to like overuse the same names again and again. And by the time I like actually start getting these seasons published, I'm going to have to be like, okay, now I have to come up with new names. But... I'd never used Anna before. And so first name Anna, last name Stone. I was like, okay, next step is to Google it. I am forever paranoid that I am going to name a character, love the name because it just feels right, and then put it out in the world and have someone realize, why did you name this character after this celebrity? Obviously, you're not going to come up with an entirely original name unless you purposefully mix up letters or you purposely spell a normal name really strangely. But... There's a difference between, oh, there's a realtor in Virginia with this name that you can Google versus, oh, there's a basketball player that thousands of people know of with this name. So I Google it. Every time I come up with a new name, that's not particularly like old fashioned or old timey sounding to where like, you know, no one's going to look at the name Edric and be like, oh, yeah, she clearly named him after whatever. Um, so I was Googling this name just to make sure. Anna Stone. This is a good name, right? We're good. We're okay. Then I found out that Anna Stone is the name of a lesbian erotica author. And the minute I saw that, I was like, <sighs> clearly, I have to keep the name now <laughs> because this is a character in a super queer sci-fi. And I don't exactly know her sexuality yet purely because the cult has so warped her brain. So she's definitely one third of a triad or will be, but I'm not sure the rest of it. However, there's just something very fitting about having a character in this super queer sci-fi have the same name as a queer author. And so I'm like, well, obviously now I have to go check out this author's work. Naturally, 
She, I believe she's indie. It's WLW Erotica, like, <laughs> duh. <laughs> so I went and I looked and I picked up the first book in her Irresistibly Bound series called Being Hers. And the minute I saw this, I was like, it is everything I have been waiting for. <laughs> because not only is it a WLW relationship, it is lesbian, both characters involved are lesbians. It is BDSM, which is like my favorite kind of romance subgenre because it is so angsty. Like, don't get me wrong. I love Chelsea Cameron's work. She's another one of those writes only WLW romances. It's a great pick if you want to get into those. I loved um, both her picks for that uh, accidentally getting married in Vegas trope and the not really enemies, but definitely lovers, enemies to lovers book. But I wanted something a little bit angstier and darker. So I read this and I very much enjoyed it. This is all about a young college student named Melanie who's working at this upscale club to help pay for her law school. And she meets the alluring Vanessa who is rich and powerful and has taken quite the liking to her. And it goes pretty much how you would expect it to. The one thing I really liked about this book was that it wasn't like, like Melanie was already interested in this kind of thing. Like Melanie already readily had these desires, even though she hadn't acted on them, but she'd already like thought about it and was totally on board. And so when it kind of came up, she's like, yes, I want this. Like it was very verbal confirmation of yes, this is the thing, as opposed to a lot of other BDSM romances I read where like the girl, usually girl who would be the submissive has to be like, coerced or convinced into it. No, Melanie was wholly on board from the beginning. And I appreciated that. And then I looked at the rest of this Irresistibly Bound series and it's all WW BDSM. Now, admittedly, I will probably skip the second one because this is one of those uh, you can read each as a standalone and there might be like Easter eggs to other books. But for the most part, you can you get the entirety of this one in that book. And the second one is enemies to lovers, like big enemies to lovers. And it's, I just don't like that trope, especially in a book as short as a lot of indie romances are, because like I require a lot of time. I require a lot of time to stop disliking a character enough that I want the romance to proceed. And these books are admittedly a little bit pricier than a lot of other indie ebooks of this length are. Like, uh, Being Hers was around 230 pages and the ebook costed $6, which is a little bit more than a lot of that other kind of books of that style, genre, and size that I've read before. So I'm definitely going to be careful to only buy the books that I definitely want to read. This is not going to be a series that I read every book just to read every book. Um, but I'm still really interested in it. And I'm still really interested in having another WLW author to add to the roster because I feel like still we're in a point where those kind of sapphic romances are still so overlooked. And don't get me wrong, I love that I have somehow found my way into reviewing a ton of works from the own voices gay male author community, but I have not done that yet for sapphic romances. If there are any authors writing sapphic books and you would like to send me a review request, I am almost open, but honestly, if you're a sapphic romance author, I might even let you get a pass in and send an email before I'm open, because I just want that so much. <laughs> but regardless, this is probably the strangest way that I've ever found a new author or a new book series, but I'm really happy I have it. I will definitely be checking out the rest of the Irresistibly Bound series and some of her other books. Uh, Anna Stone doesn't have the cliche, I think you could call it, output of an indie author where there's like a quadrillion books, but it does seem like they are very concise series and at least she at least has two series out right now. So I've got uh, a decent back catalog to go through. And I also wish that she was on Twitter more because I don't do a lot with Facebook pages or Facebook in general, to be honest. But in general, uh, thank you so much <laughs> for watching. What's the strangest way you've ever found a book before? Is it stranger than mine? I would love to hear it. You can put that down in the comments below. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.